So spring is upon us. Today we're gonna to talk about air purifiers and which ones to get. I'm not just gonna talk about the specific ones I use. I'm also gonna talk about air purifiers work and how you can choose your own. So you're not limited to what I have or maybe something else works better for you. What kind of air purifier is good enough for someone like me who's literally allergic to everything? Hey fellow allergies, asthma, and eczema sufferers. My name is Jeffrey Lin. Welcome to the first episode of Sick Year. Medications, mental toughness, sometimes just isn't enough and sometimes we need gear to help us out uh, to defend us against the environment, whether if the environment's outside or in our house. So it's obvious that those of us with chronic immune illnesses need air purifiers, but also those of us with eczema, just because, well, first of all, a lot of eczema is caused by allergic reactions and immune reactions to the environment or to food. And also, sometimes we're just reacting to our own dust and skin peeling everywhere and dust mites eating up those skins. So you need something like this to really keep your environment clean. What kind of air purifier is good enough for someone like me who's literally allergic to everything? So I started researching into what hospitals use, what clean rooms use, and even what the Tesla bioweapons defense mode air filter. The, the net effect of, of the uh, air filtration system uh, is that you have air cleanliness levels which are comparable to a hospital operating room in the car. You just press the bioweapon defense mode button. <laughs> this is a real button. <laughs> What all these places use is the HEPA filter, which catches 99.97 of anything that's out there, including bacteria, viruses, dust. It'll clean out 99.97% of all these things down to 0.3 microns. So if it's good enough for hospitals and clean rooms where you don't want even a tiny bit of dust or bacteria or anything getting in, uh, you know, even blocking out infectious diseases, HEPA is the way to go. However, there are a lot of HEPA-like, HEPA-style, HEPA-similar, or even called 99% HEPA filters out there that aren't really HEPA. They're just trying to be, it's like a marketing ploy. Uh, so be very careful about that. If it doesn't say HEPA or more specifically true HEPA, say no. And some of these newer air purifiers will make it sound like HEPA isn't that great, uh, like their technology is better, but it's not true. HEPA is really, really high tech. It's made of uh, fiberglass and it's woven in very random shapes and patterns so that uh, all these things like dust particles and bacteria and even some bigger viruses can't get through. So let's put my engineering degree to use and let's look at a chart of the efficiency of HEPA filters. You'll see that HEPA filters are actually only slightly inefficient at that 0.3 micron size level. And anything smaller than that or anything larger than that, it can actually capture very well. So even viruses smaller than 0.3 microns, it could capture that pretty well. The second thing you want to note when buying an air purifier is pay attention to the CADR rate, which is the clean air delivery rate. It's a rating for three specific kinds of dust particles. It's for smoke, pollen, and dust. So a CADR rate basically tells you how much of the air in a room that an air purifier can clean out efficiently. So the higher CADR rates are able to clean out larger rooms and they're able to clean out rooms faster. Usually the good air purifiers will tell you the room size that it can filter efficiently and then it'll give a CADR rate according to that room size. Usually I like to use an air purifier that's slightly larger than the room size that I have just so I can make sure that it's cleaning out all the air. So if your CADR rate is too low for the room size that you have then you're just not cleaning out the smoke, dust, and pollen 
at a fast enough rate so it's likely to get in your body and cause problems. If you can't get a bigger air filter, then you just gotta reduce your room size. And you do that just by staying in a smaller room in your house and closing the door and therefore limiting any air outside that the smaller air filter probably can't reach. Now let's talk about how a good HEPA air filter works. I'm gonna use the Honeywell HPA series as an example. So I have two of these Honeywell HPA 200s for large rooms, and I have one of these Honeywell HPA 300s for extra large rooms. So I'll leave the links to these air purifiers and the filters they use below in the description. This thing has a very high CADR rate, so it's constantly drawing in pollutants and viruses and bacteria and all the things we talked about. The first layer of defense is a pre-filter. For a pre-filter, it uses the sheet with activated carbon, which cleans out volatile organic gases and odors and traps larger particles. If you guys use water purifiers like Brita, Brita also uses activated carbon and uh, even when you're camping somewhere if you need to purify your water if you can get activated carbon which is basically charcoal it'll purify your water so that you can drink it as i mentioned this pre-filter is the one that filters out odors and organic gases uh, technically the name is vocs or volatile organic gases and they're very common especially in the household they're found in furniture and cleaning supplies, paint, and even carpets. Um, so volatile organic gases or VOCs can cause skin and respiratory irritation, allergies and headaches, and a lot of other things. <clears throat> I have a aware air monitor right here that monitors um, several things, including uh, volatile organic gases, which is this fourth um, indicated right here and it's showing one dot which is low level so it's safe and you need to be very careful of VOCs because um, some of them are man-made like I said from in your paint and other things in your house and some of them are natural but so VOCs are typically not acutely toxic that means they're not going to cause you to react or even be aware that they're around but they have long-term slow effects that they just build up in your body and eventually they'll cause a lot of trouble for you or it might just give you like permanent headaches or uh, you can't think or you're just fatigued uh, a lot of it could be because of VOCs so the pre-filter combined with the HEPA filter will filter out uh, PM 2.5 pollutants and those are pollutants that are uh, 2.5 microns or smaller and uh, they stay airborne a lot longer. PM 2.5 can cause anything from stuffy noses to itchy eyes. And uh, it could latch in your lungs, triggering asthma and allergies and other inflammations. Um, using the wear air monitor, uh, this last dot over here tracks the PM 2.5 and this one is also at uh, the lowest level right now so the air in here is really good to start you just open the filter latch see the HEPA filters goes first it's very easy just follow the arrow and then and then you put the pre-filter on fitting into these latches Operation is super simple. There's only four speeds, so uh, you just tap the power to get it started, and germ is the lowest level. You can go to general clean, just the second speed. Allergen is high, and if you really need deep cleaning for viruses or bacteria, you can go turbo. Clean all the air in your room about five times per hour. To turn it off, you just press power again. And when the pre-filter, the carbon activated filter is dirty and needs changing, this light will light up. And if the HEPA filter uh, becomes too dirty and needs changing, the check filter light will turn on. So you don't have to worry about changing it every couple months. You only change it when 
uh, these lights show up for the specific filter that you need to change. And here's a timer where you can set it to run for two hours, four hours, or eight hours. All right, that's it. Very simple, right? The pre-filters usually need to be changed about three to six months and they cost about 10 bucks. And the HEPA filters usually last a year with normal usage and they're only about $15. <laughs> Obviously, if you run it all the time like I do, it won't last as long. It'll last about half as long, but it's still a lot cheaper than needing more medication or even just one ER visit uh, can buy like years of these. One last thing I want to caution you about, uh, at least to me, these filters do have a slight factory odor uh, when you first open the bag, uh, when you get a new one. So usually I just uh, run it in a larger room, like the family room, uh, for about two weeks to clear out um, the fresh uh, new filter smell. And then I'll bring it into my room and it's just fine. All right, hope this will keep you guys allergy free and feeling better this spring and this summer at least for us in california with all the fires and uh, pollutants in the air um, check these out or uh, use what i discuss here to find your own uh, good hepa true hepa air purifiers and leave in the comments below which ones you guys like i haven't tried everything so i would like to get your input on it. I do want to caution everybody that there are air filters like the air dog that use ionic technology. Those often can trigger asthma. So you, if you have really severe allergies or asthma, uh, just stay away from those. If you're, if you just have normal allergies, runny noses, um, you can consider those, but there's a reason why hospitals and clean rooms don't use uh, the ionic technology and they stick with the tried and true HEPA filters. It's because uh, the HEPA filters are still the safest and most reliable for all kinds of sensitivities and illnesses. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help my channel a lot so that I can reach more people, uh, help more people like us who have chronic illnesses. Why do I need air purifiers? To give you a little bit of background about my condition, I'm severely allergic to literally everything on the planet. And I also have severe asthma, and I also have probably one of the top five most severe eczema and skin conditions that research doctors have ever seen. What that means is, yes, I'm literally allergic to all food. I couldn't touch water for about 10 years. A lot of times I'm allergic to the sun if I don't have the right medications. And for all of you guys who suggest, oh, why don't you try this diet or that diet? I literally can't because I am allergic to all foods or anything I put inside me or anything I have contact with in the environment will give me a severe allergic attack. And because I can't literally escape the environment, I constantly have very severe inflammations both inside the body and outside including anywhere in my intestines, in my lungs, in my nervous system, in my joints, and in my tendons, and in my flesh, and who knows where else. But what most of you will see is my eczema, my skin condition. And I grew up with the dry eczema where it's really cracked, uh, bleeding, uh, shedding all the time. So there's literally dust that needs to be cleaned up nonstop. I have piles of skin on my bed sheets every single day. I'll fill up a little trash bag. Uh, but as I got older, the situation turned into the wet eczema where basically I didn't have any skin at all. My skin would be constantly leaking body fluids and it would constantly be bleeding and infected from head to toe. Clothes, bed sheets will stick to my skin and anytime I move, it'll just tear off whatever little skin that is left and it'll just bleed even more and and the inflammation got so bad that it even affected my brain. So for a while, I didn't know who I was and I forgot how to speak.